You are listening to Compliance Insights, a podcast by Mnemonic. We discuss all things related to compliance with environmental, health and safety, and quality rules. I'm Una Jefferson. A few weeks ago, the government of the Canadian province of Quebec announced regulations to finally implement the Petroleum Resources Act, which was passed back in 2016. These regulations also filled in a lot of the details on what Quebec's regime governing oil and gas exploration and production and storage will look like. Emily Bundock is an associate at Faskin, who's been involved in some key cases related to oil and gas development and activity in Quebec, notably providing research assistance in the Lone Pine Resources Incorporated versus Government of Canada case. She joined me to talk about the new regulations and what they mean for oil and gas activities in Quebec. Emily Bundock, thank you for coming on the podcast. It's great to have you. It's my pleasure, Una, and a pleasure to meet you this morning. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. Um, so this Petroleum Resources Act, it's not new. It was passed at the end of 2016. Um, and we've seen a few drafts of these regulations to implement it since then. Um, so how much new information is contained in this um, announcement on August 20th of these regulations that, that would implement it? Well, as you mentioned, the uh, Wiley Act was passed late December uh, or late 2016 in December. It was not applicable in practice because we didn't have the specific regulations that were required to implement it. And those entered into force just only about 10 days ago on September 20th. Um, So the Act and the regulations together provide a comprehensive legal framework that's applicable to the exploration, production, storage, and transportation of oil and gas. Um, The English title, I think, may be a bit misleading um, because it states petroleum resources, uh, but however, it regulates both oil and natural gas resources. Uh, So the title in French is probably more descriptive of the object of the the new legal framework, which is la loi sur les hydrocarbures. Um, So the, the act itself was not sufficient to regulate both oil and gas activities and the transportation and all the ancillary work that needs to be um, regulated around those activities. The Act provides the framework, the general principles. So, for example, an obligation for a proponent to apply for a license. Um, There's a focus on ensuring the safety of persons and property. so there's there's also environmental protection that's mentioned in there, and the general principle is of optimal recovery of the resources. The regulations provide further details on the obligations and the principles that are provided in the Act. So, for example, they set out the details of the license application process, what the proponent needs to file um, together with its application. So that's something that we didn't have before Uh, September 20th, or we didn't have the clarity or the real process before that date. And then the obligations of the license holder. So once once a proponent has obtained the license, um, the various obligations and the technical requirements that must be met by anyone engaging in those regulated activities. Um, I think maybe what would be useful for the audience is if we just briefly state what's in those three regulations that were adopted. Um, So there's the first one is the regulation respecting petroleum exploration and production and storage on land. The second one is similar but relates to uh, those activities in a body of water. And the third one is about the, um, the actual licenses and the authorization process. So while the two first ones, let's say, um, set out technical requirements applicable to the performance of those activities by the license holder. The third one is really about the license application process. Um, So anyone who's interested in engaging in those activities uh, must comply with the the requirements that are set out in that regulation. And also what's uh, important to mention is that anyone who currently holds a license will have to comply with the um, with the regulations to make sure that they maintain that license. So, for example, current um, current pipeline operators will need to apply for uh, use 
license to make sure that they can maintain their operations. And there's a certain uh, deadline for them to comply with the regulations. So there's nothing very surprising in those regulations because the Quebec government relied mainly on regulations and standards that are enforced in other jurisdictions. Um, so in terms of applicable standards and technical requirements, it's going to be very similar to um, whatever you've seen in other uh, oil and gas uh, jurisdictions. To clarify, similar to oil and gas in other jurisdictions or elsewhere in Canada or in the world, or similar to existing legislation in Quebec that was relevant to oil and gas activities like the Mining Act or Environmental Quality Act? Well, what's interesting is there's a, there's a, a let's say, uh, a very close relationship between the Environmental Quality Act and this new Petroleum Resources Act in that um, someone will not, like a proponent will not be issued a license unless and until they comply with the Environment Quality Act. So if they need to get an authorization pursuant to the Environment Quality Act, which they will they will have to get one. Um, so the um, the license will not be issued under the Petroleum Resources Act until they get that um, ministerial authorization under the Environment Quality Act. So given this reliance on existing standards or best practices, how likely is this new regulatory regime to change oil and gas activities in Quebec? Um, so as I mentioned I don't think there will be much surprises in terms of the technical requirements. Um, so, for example, compliance with CSA standards is something that's very well known in the industry. Um, mandatory inspections and record keeping is also something that the industry is used to comply with. What's probably more surprising is the new role of the Régie de l'énergie here in Quebec in issuing those licenses and let's say, um, overseeing the, uh, this, this upstream oil and gas sector, which is not something that the Régie de l'énergie has done in the past. Um, maybe to situate everybody a little more, the Régie de l'énergie has historically been an economic regulation agency and is still as of today, um, its mission is really to foster the conciliation of the public interest, consumer protection, the fair treatment of the electricity carrier and natural gas distributors. And uh, so the Régie's role is really in fixing and modifying rates and conditions for the, uh, the transmission of electric power. Uh, distribution of electric power and distribution of um, distribution, transmission and delivery of natural gas by the natural gas uh, distributors. So it doesn't touch on upstream oil and gas activities at the moment. Um, so it's therefore quite a shift for the Régie to now being, let's say, brought into the the bigger um, the bigger spectrum of the oil and gas, like the upstream oil and gas sector. Um, and the last time I looked at the Régie de l'Energie's website was yesterday, and there was still no guidance uh, for proponents to to prepare and file their, their applications. So it's going to be, um, I know the Régie is working on, on elaborating such guidance um, and guidelines, um, and they were, um, they gave a presentation earlier this year about what they, how they are preparing to um, play that role. Um, so I'm sure they're 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 going to be ready. It's just a matter for them to um, to pick that up. Okay, um, I'd like to zoom out a bit and just talk about the regime, the broader regime, uh, including the act itself. Um, the Petroleum Resources Act states that it is intended to govern oil and gas activities in accordance with the province of Quebec's greenhouse gas reduction targets. Um, what, what does this mean in practice? This is a very interesting question. Um, the, the only statement about greenhouse gas reduction targets is found in Section 1 of the Act. Um, so there's no reference to greenhouse gas in the regulations per se. However, there is a requirement for 
the license holder, for example, to ensure to carry out activities in order to eliminate or reduce to a minimum the volume of gas released into the atmosphere. Um, so certain technical requirements um, have to be met. Uh, so, for example, contribute to the combustion of gases using a pilot ignition at the flare or other device or their recovery where possible and implement a leak inspection plan. Um, but that said, because no license may be granted unless and until the authorization required under the Environment Quality Act has been issued, this requirement may be assessed by the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Environment and Fight Against Climate Change. So that's gonna be assessed via what the so-called climate test um, and indeed, the greenhouse gas emissions attributable to a project and the emission reduction plan, for example, will be required um, as part of the application for a ministerial authorization and will be taken into consideration by the minister when they, they assess the application and before they issue the, uh, the license. So that's going to be looked at more under the, um, the Environment Quality Act part of the uh, the license issuance process. Okay. W what about this idea of social acceptability? Um, this the, A project's social acceptability was introduced or set up as a criterion for approval um, in the Petroleum Resources Act. Now that these regulations are out, do we have a sense of how the social acceptability of a project will be determined? It's very hard to say because um, we still don't have a definition of social acceptability and it's it's hard to provide or, or provide guidance with respect to what would be a real indicator of when a project can be considered as having reached social acceptability. Um, the new framework, however, provides, I think, a real opportunity for enhanced transparency, um, notices to landowners, for example, public hearings, um, reporting, etc. cetera. Um, there was nothing of that before. So this is all new with the new regime. And I think it's uh, those are key elements, I, I would say, for um, a good contribution to improve social acceptability of the oil and gas industry in Quebec. Can we learn anything from the way social acceptability has been defined in other industries where it is part of the project approval process, or at least in some measure it is claimed to be, like uh, wind energy or mining, for example? I think there's certainly um, very nice parallels to to make between the various industries. I mean, um, local communities are key stakeholders, uh, so I believe that whatever trans like a transparent approach um relationship building those um the monitoring committees for example under the mining act are are something that that certainly um help in terms of reaching that social acceptability uh standard so yes i would say there are parallels that that we can make between the various industries and probably because of the oil and gas activity uh, was not so um, important in terms of scale in Quebec. It was probably uh, let aside or pushed aside for a certain number of years. And that's uh, probably something that will be more, um, more of a factor, social acceptability with this new framework. And the mechanisms, like I said, of notices to landowners, for example, or public hearings, and reporting will certainly uh, improve social acceptability of the oil and gas industry. So uh, the Petroleum Resources Act is now in effect um, as of September 20th. And as I think about the future of this legislation, there are a few factors I'm curious about. First of all, as we speak, Quebecers are going to the polls to elect a new government. And, you know, the announcement of these regulations was conspicuously close to the election. Um, and second, I know uh, Quest Air Energy, which is b based in Calgary, has announced its intent to bring a legal challenge to some elements of these new regulations, um, saying parts of them were outside of the authority of government. So how might these two factors determine the future of, uh, of this legislation? 
Well, as you said, I mean, this morning and as of 10 minutes ago, actually, the polls opened. So Quebecers are voting now for their new government. Um, two of the major parties are probably more likely to take power, the Liberals or the CAC, Coalition Avenir Quebec. Um, the, the Liberals' position is very much in line with the recently enacted legal framework. Of course, they were in power um, during the drafting of those regulations. Uh, exploration and production of oil and gas resources will be allowed where it complies with applicable laws and regulations. That's the, the position that the Liberals have taken throughout the campaign. And fracturing in shale would also be prohibited. So that's all part of their um, their messaging uh, around the ca the campaign. Um, the CAC's position is still unclear. And um, as for the PQ and Quebec Solidaire, they are more likely to, let's say, distantiate from oil and gas activities in Quebec. Uh, so they would stop subsidies of the um, subsidies to the oil and gas industry. And their programs is more focused on transition toward renewable resources. Um, so while most candidates during the campaign have opposed to the exploration and production of oil and gas, as well as the construction of pipelines crossing Quebec, the, uh, the act is now in force and proponents have a, um, can have expectations that this act will be enacted, that the legal framework will allow them to file applications for licenses and go forward with their investments and their and their projects. Um, but what will happen next, I mean, as of tomorrow, still remains unclear. And so we have yet to see if uh, if and, and what is going to be the approach of the next government. Um, with respect to Questair Energy's uh, news release, I know they've um, they've expressed an intent to um, to file and I mean to oppose to those regulations. Um, I haven't seen their brief, uh, so I can't really comment on that. But my understanding is they question the actual process of passing those regulations. Um, so that would also be uh, an interesting task for the next government to take on as of tomorrow. Well, it'll be very interesting to see how this all plays out. Uh, thank you very much, Emily, for your time. Thank you for listening to Compliance Insights, a podcast by Mnemonic. If you have questions, comments, or topics you'd like to hear discussed, we would love to hear them. You can send me an email at ujefferson at mnemonic.com. That's N-I-M-O-N-I-K dot com. You can find us and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts or online at mnemonic.com.